hitting the record. All right. Okay. I was asked to do a shameless plug just on Parrots' post. If we could just ask everybody to please be careful and use the mute button. Because there's a lot of yawning. There's a lot of coughing because people forget to put it back on. If you have something to say, please say it, but then go back to mute. There you go. Okay. The Thank default you. is mute. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. The default okay. should be mute. Fine. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Fine. I'd hate on Gilgal Shua. That's what we're up to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines down from the top. So how far does Gilgal Shua go? Right? Meaning we, we've been saying that if you normally have a, uh, a din where you can't make a shvua for whatever reason, but you have another din that you could make a shvua, so then we'll make you make a shvua on both. Meaning the case that we were talking about is that on land, if a guy goes to his friend and says, your house is my house, and also your $100 in your wallet is my $100. So the Tyra says the land part, and the guy admits to half of each. He says half your house is taka yours, half the money is yours. So from Mekzeres Akosov, there's no shavua on the house part because it's karka, but there is a shavua on the money part. But the Mishnah says, since you're already making a shavua on the money part, we roll on the gilgal, we megalgal on it, the shavua on the house part too. So that's what we said. So we said the source of that is from the parsha of Saita. Right? Now we want to know how far do you take a gilgal shavua? That's odd hate on gilgal shavua. How far does gilgal shavua go? You walk over to a guy and tell him, swear to me that you're not my, that you're not my Evid. Uh, so obviously you can't go over to any guy in the street and say, hey, you're my Evid. And the guy says, no, okay, swear to me. So that's not going to happen, right? But if the person is already making a shvua on something else, then he may have to roll in the shvua that he's also not his slave. That's what the guy wants. So they want to ask, how could it be that we tolerate somebody going over to his friend and saying that he's his, uh, that he's an Evid? We put him into Cherem. This, this guy you put into Cherem. The Tanya, Akarel Chaveri Evid. You call, somebody calls his friend an Evid. Hey, Benidu, he goes into Cherem. Because you're, you're, this is also good for before, uh, before Yom and Arayim, Right? If you go make fun of your friend and you say that he's an Evid, then you go into Cherem. Right? Um, and if you say Mamzer, if you call you your friend a Mamzer, which... You're, it's, how do you put him into Cherem? It's my word against his word. I mean, I guess maybe it's done in public. Was, could it be it was no, done I'm saying, in public? So, so, so you come over to me and you say I'm, I'm, I'm your slave. And I say it's not true. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, maybe, how does this guy get maybe into, this, into Cherem? Maybe, maybe there's two ways then. There's two of them that know that it never happened, that it's totally not true. No, that he said it. There were no the two Adams ever saying there were two Adams that he Taka called him an Evid. An Evid Kanani, Rashi points out, not Evid Ivri. Evid Ivri is no Khassaran to be an Evid Ivri. It's only a Khassaran to be an Evid Kanani. Right? Because you know, some people sometimes are hard up for money, so they need to sell themselves. But Evid Kanani, it's someone an Evid Kanani. Yeah, I'm assuming it's either like like you're saying, there's either Adim or it's well known in town that the guy in the guy called him an Evid Kanani, right? So anyway, so I call a very Evid. Hey, Benito, he's going to be in Chayim. Mamzer, so if he gets Arabim, he gets forty Malkus, right? Now, obviously, this is not from the Torah, so what he uh, means uh, Malkus Marzis, right? Which is interesting that. Um, it's, Rashi says this is better than going into Cherem. That just shows you how strong how strong friendship is is required and socializing, right? Rather forty mark. I don't know if you ask me which which one I would rather. I'm not so sure. I would say that I'd rather forty markers instead of being in Cherem. What's to be in Cherem? So you sit on the internet all day, right? Right? Unless they didn't allow internet in the Cherem. I don't know. But it's a big Chiddush that, that uh, I thought it's a big Chiddush. That 40 Makas is less of a punishment than than being in Cherem. Okay. And if you call Russia, if you call him a Russia, Yerud Ima Lechayev. You go down into his life, meaning you're allowed to open up a competition to him 
and try and knock him out. Right? That's what Rashi says. You can basically try and put him out of business. So now I just I just had it I just had it schwer. It's some I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, if a guy calls somebody a mamzer, that means he's defecting Darius and he only gets Marcus. While if he calls his friend and have a Kanani, it only affects one door. That's it worse. Right, no, no, so I hear, but I don't think anybody's halachically going to consider this guy a mamzer. They're not going to just right, marry their have... family. They're not going to marry their family. Yeah, Some or, you know, the people do, okay, like he yelled at him, okay, shine, but that's not, it's not, it's not going to hold up in court. But here, but he was going to ask on no, Russia, call someone a Russia, and now he's allowed to actually be a Russia. Oh, right, exactly. So that's that's the chiddush. There's two Rebbe Kivegers on this. It's not often you get two Rebbe Kivegers on within four words of each other on Russia, and then and then another one on Lechayev. But basically, let's understand it first. So this guy is allowed to take revenge. He called him a Russia. You're allowed to take revenge. You're allowed to go and blow up his business. So this that we hear about all these f- people fighting in business, listen, maybe one guy called the other guy at Russia, right? And then Mameli is allowed to go down and blow up his business. So, I mean, that's a Pefer Shigemona right here, that you're allowed to do this. Well, right? One second. We learned that if uh, you ask me, if I ask you to borrow your car and you say no, uh, and the next right. day you need my car, right, I can't, I can't say no because then I know I'm not a Maiman. Well, because it's Laisikam Laisito. You're taking an allowed to take revenge. Right. And here you're allowed to. Oh, exactly. This is an. See, sometimes, sometimes <laughs> when you learn Gemaras, you learn. So the shot in this is based on the Gemaras in. in uh, Where's the Gemara? Uh, Yuma. Right, it's a Gemara in Yuma, which I don't remember having it in Yuma. Uh, no yeah, so there it says it's you're only not allowed to take Nakama when it's a financial thing. Meaning your friend didn't want to lend you his hammer, so what? So you have to still lend him your hammer. That's fine. But when it gets personal, then there's no Isra Loisikum Loisita. That's what the Gemara that's what the Gemara says. And that's what this Gemara is saying, the same thing. Mutter Lisnaisai, Rashi says. Look at the Rashi. Fourth wide line down. It's an important Rashi. Kalemer Lazu ain't Bezin is cooking. Right? Bezin's not going to get involved. If a guy calls another guy in Russia, Bezin's not getting involved. Aval who mutter It's mutter. doesn't say he's mechuyev to, but he's allowed to hate him. You could even dig into his parnasa, valeri luminosa, and even go into his umnas and take away Bezin. That, and that's, you, it's not, Bezin's not going to advocate for you, but if you choose to do it, you're within your rights. And the reason is because the Gemara and Yuma is saying, because if it gets personal, there's no Isra Laisikam Right? What do you mean, what do you mean gets so, personal? I don't understand. What? What do you mean gets personal? There's no Laisikam Laisita? Right. No, Laisikam Laisita is, is in business, not in personal. Right? Wait a minute. If a guy... If a guy's uh-huh. only the Gemara and Yuma doesn't say it befairish, but the Gemara and Yuma says the Gemara asks it, and the Gemara says, "Well, it does really does say befairish." We're looking at it now. It says, "Yeah." The Gemara says, "Oh, loisikam v'loisita." How do you go after the guy? And the Gemara answers, "That's only by money. Loisikam v'loisita, not taking revenge, is only by finance. Meaning, a guy comes to you, go to a guy and say, hey, "Listen, I need to borrow money to do a deal." The guy says, "No way." Fine. A year later, he comes to you and says, I need money to do a deal. And you tell him, no way, because you didn't help me. There you are on two Isura Daraisa, Laisikim and Laisita. But if a guy comes over to you and says that you're a you're a Ferd and a Russian and a Evid and whatever, he, he goes at you. And then two days later, he comes back to you for a loan. You're not Mechul to do it. You could say, you screamed at me. You embarrassed me. I, I'm not giving you the money. And that's, that's, and that's, fu- that's, fi- that's finance also. What do you mean? That's you're, not not giving, you're not giving him a loan. You're going to help him. Yeah, but the re- yeah, but the reason why you're not giving him a loan is not because he didn't help you out in business. The reason you're not giving it is because you're offended because the guy embarrassed you. So that's your lotto? 
This Gemara says you're allowed to. So now in the art school, Grada, I didn't, I didn't have a chance to look. He brings it up down the Chavetz Chaim that you should be machmer. He brings the Chavetz Chaim says it's a Suffolk Dairai, so you should be machmer. So I started looking at it. I don't see where the Chavetz Chaim really says that. But uh, I'd have to look again. I'd have to look again. But this Gemara is basically this Gemara is basically saying that if so, that you allowed to you allowed to go into compet- direct competition with him. Right, that's what he's saying. Yes. If yes. somebody insulted you, you allowed to go into direct competition. That's exactly what the Gemara is saying. One hundred percent. That's what it's saying. Somebody else was saying something. Yeah, Tiago, I watched your father deal with this in the bungalow. People would scream and yell at him about this not working, that not working, and then come Meyer if they need him to air Paskin the Shilas for them. <laughs> right. It's, yeah, right. It's a little crazy, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's it's true. Yep, you're right. It's a good point. Anyway, so that's a Gemara's Kasha. So it can't be that the case here of doing a Gilgal Shvua is by a guy telling him that he's an Evid and he better swear to him that he's not. Because he's not allowed to call him an Evid. So what's the shot in, in the Mishnah that you you being how far, I'm sorry how far do you go that you being Megal Galushua? So he shavali shalenim keres li beevid ivri. He says, swear to me that you're not gonna that you didn't weren't sold to me as an evid ivri, right? As a Jewish as a Jewish slave. So the Gemara says, hi taina samal. You say that's a good taina. Minus like away. Basically, when he says that you're an evid ivri. You're my Evid Ivri. Basically, what he's saying is that you owe me money. So why can't we make him make a shul that way? Right? So Rav Latamei, Dama Rav, Evid Ivri, Gufa Ikani. Because Rav is going with what he holds, which is an Evid Ivri. His guf is kind to you. So therefore, since his guf is kind to you, that's like Karka. So the Gemara says, Ihochi Hainu Karka. That is Karka. So um, why? Then that's a regular standard making a shul, a rollover a shul on Karka. The Gemara answers, "Mild the same Makarka who dav the inchi the mizavni b'tzinna." Now you would think Karka sometimes under the table they make a, they make a deal, right? In isa the zavin less lekala, they somebody might sell a Karka that is no kol, so therefore they, you're going to make him make a shvua because you have no idea who's saying the truth. Hi, in isa the zavin, but everybody when when a guy gets sold as a slave that becomes news. People know about that. Right, I am Isa. The Zavin call is he has a call, so maybe you shouldn't be able to make somebody make a shvua when he denies that he's an Eved, or he quasi denies it. Denies it. Kamashvulan. The chiddush of the Gemara is that even if he if he if he says that he's a Eved, it's still uh, it's still you still would make him make a shvua. But talk to Mishnah. Kol anasa domim ba'acher. So. Anything that, how, how is the, I, I don't understand. How does it work? You, you come to me out of the blue and say something about me. I have to make a shvua. I thought we had all no. these come up. That everybody's all jumping up and down. They're so afraid to make a shvua. They'll give you their pants rather than make a shvua. Now a guy comes to you and says, he got, blah, blah, blah. So you have to no, make no, a shvua? No, no, you're right. No, you're right. No, you don't. That's what we're saying. But if he has something else, we're only talking about a Gilgal shvua here, meaning... He has some mon- monetary thing against no, him. I don't, I don't understand the Gilgul Shvua either. You'll excuse me. Okay. okay I'm sorry. One thing has nothing right, to do so with on. the other. Just because you caught me on this, what does that have to do with the other thing? No, that's true. But meaning, if I if a guy comes over to me and says, hey, you owe me you owe me $1,000, and I tell yeah. him, I only owe you $500. So then you're Chayiv so in the You're Chayiv in the exactly. So, the Torah says I'm Chayiv right. in the Right, so that makes sense. And now what happens if he says to me that not only do you owe me $1,000, you also, your house belongs to me. And I say, half my house belongs to you. So now on that, the Torah says no shvur. Right? The Torah says no shvur. Shvur is only on money. Okay. He says, okay. So then, so now what the Gilgal shvur says, well, since you're required to make a shvur because you denied half the money, we're going to roll over and say that you also have to make a shvur on the kaka. That's all I, the That's okay, all I just, I, I, I just, I don't understand that. I don't understand. Uh, okay. They're saying, they're saying once you're making a shvur for this, you can make a shvur for that. Okay. I, I hear you. I hear your lack of understanding. It's, it's not so easy to understand. I Meaning one thing was well, not sure it is understandable. It's six years of custom, to Yaakov. I'm yeah, not hopping. It's not understandable. Well, it might even make sense. We're talking about Pusik. I'm not hopping. Like, Either, the Torah says you're Mechayi Yeshua for one of them. If you don't, why should you be Mechayi Yeshua for Maidim Mitzas? Thank you. 
Why? Oh, because the Tyra said you are. Well, there you go. Gilgosu is the same Tyra. I know, but Gilgosu is not. I'm not Gilgosu is learned out like... from Saita. <laughs> Gilgosu is learned out from Saita. We learned out of a Pasuk. I mean, I mean. Without a main a main, we would never ever say the din of Gilgal Shua. These are right. Joshes. I'm not hopping why we need a spar to say this. The Gemara never said a spar like Abi Gilgal Shua. Gemara Darshan did. Yeah. That's uh You're right. What should I... okay. That's what you have to say, that the Gemara Darshan did. But what else were we saying till now? No, and a Hanami, but this, but the Gemara obviously felt that that's what you should do, and therefore look for a Joshua, right? Right, but I'm not having why Maidim and Mixox is less of a Chiddush and, and Gilgosh was more of a Chiddush. It's the same Chiddush. Okay. Terry says you're Mechoy Yavishu for one, you're Mechoy Yavishu for the other. Yeah. Okay, I hear that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, okay, I don't know. But that's, but that's what the point is, is that the Chiddush is, is even in Evid, even if the guy says to him, you owe me a hundred dollars, and he and he admits fifty, and then he says, "You know, by the way, you're also my slave." <laughs> and then he has to make a shmuel on that too. Yeah, that's what that's what the Gemara is saying. Yeah, okay. Zok the Mishnah by the Kol Anasa Domin Ba'achem. If somebody, if you use money, the Gemara is going to change what this pshat. But we'll do it the Havamina first, and then we'll see in the Gemara changes pshat. Kol Anasa Domin Ba'achem. If somebody used money for 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 something else, meaning Rashi says it means kesef, meaning you bought something with kesef. Kivin shezochaze. Once that person takes the money, the chayiv is a chalifa. So then this person's chayiv, and for whatever it is that he was swapping the money for, right? Meaning, I go and and uh, buy something from my friend, and the the item is not here. The item is in a warehouse, but he already took the money from me. Then a big storm comes and destroys the warehouse. I'm on the hook because I already bought the item. Once I gave him cash, he was kind of it. He's kind of the cash. I'm kind of the item. And then, uh, and that's it. I'm on the hook for it. That's what the Gemara, that's the way we read the Mishnah right here, right now. It's going to change. All right, Let's say we swap a shor for a para, or a donkey for an ox. Kivan Shazach Right, once one of them is zayche in in this one, which either one of the animals is chayiv zeh bechalifos, and then the other one is automatically going to be chayiv to, to be responsible for the for the other item. Why weren't they guys right? like mammon? So we're going to see on Amabay. So let, let's see. What are you talking about with Mashiach? No, anything meaning if they were guys about mammon that they're worried that um, you know chita balia and you're going to lose it in a fire. Any Kenyan that leaves the 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 possession in 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 the, in the hands of the Meicher, you should be geyser on. Why would you only be geyser right. on one and not the other? Right. Okay. So let's wait till I'm a base to see how see how it goes. But anyways, that's what the Gemara is saying. Once you give money or chalipin, then the other person, even though they never took possession of it, becomes responsible for it. The Gemara asks, chalipin my ninhu, my nihu, what? What do you mean by chalipin? Matzpeya? Are we talking about a coin? Shema mino matzpeya nasa chalipin. So that means our Mishnah is saying that you can do a Kenyan chalipin with money. Right? Normally we do a Kenyan chalipin with a handkerchief. Right? What the Gemara is saying now is that I could actually give a dollar to somebody to something that costs a thousand dollars and that would also be a Kenyan chalipin. Right, but we hold. So the Gemara is asking, but we know that that's not true. You can't do a Kenyan chalipin with money. You have to do a Kenyan chalipin with an object, not with money. We'll see more of this on Amar base. So our Mishnah seems to be saying that you could do chalipin with money. Right? Some of you, we're going to change the pshat. Hachi Kamer, this is what the Mishnah is saying. Kol hanisham damim ba'acher. If you evaluate money with something else, meaning if you take a uh, if you take a phone, let's say, and you evaluate that the phone is worth two hundred dollars, then you use that as currency. So Atom and Bayes now. Again, you're using something that was evaluated for how much it's worth. Kivan Shazakhaza, since one guy is in it, the Skaiba Khalibin, then whatever it is that you were swapping it out for, the guy becomes Khaiv in the Khalibin. Why? Because we that that 
phone or whatever it is that you evaluated became became his, right? And therefore, automatically, the item that was being swapped out for becomes part of the purchaser's. And therefore, the purchaser is now on the hook. Take Konami, that this is Pshan of the Mishnah, Gatani, Ketad, why, what's the case? Hichlif Shar Baparo, why, what's the last case in the in the Mishnah, the second case in the Mishnah? If you swapped out a Shar for a Paro, or Chamor B'Shar, right, that's a Chalipin, it's a Shema Mino, that we're not talking about money, we're talking about items, and then you could do, you can do Chalipin with items, meaning, the point is, is that this Shar and Paro, or Chamor and Shar, are not necessarily worth the same thing, so it's not necessarily an even swap, but it doesn't make a difference because it's being used as chalipin. Right? When you do a when you do a handkerchief by a chuppah, right, with the chassan picks up the handkerchief from the adam and he's giving the kala what uh, the ksuba. I mean, that that's worth a whole lot more than the handkerchief, at least I hope. Right. So then, so then, how does that work? Because that's the way kinyan chalipin works. So that's what our mission is talking about too. It's talking about a kinyan chalipin, what things not with actual money, with things that are worth money. And what you thought in the beginning, the matpeya nasa chalipin, that you could use a coin for chalipin, my my ketzat. And then what's the ketzat? You're talking about doing chalipin with money, and then you say ketzat, what's the case? And you talk about swapping animals. There's no money involved there. So in the Havamina, how do we understand the Mishnah? The Gemara answers, Hokikoma, Peris nami avdi chalipin. The Gemara is saying that Peris also can make. Can make uh, chalipin, right? Not just money, but again, this is the habami. But payers too. Ketzad hichlif the shor, hich hichlif basar shor beparo. If you swap out the basar, now it doesn't say shor. Now we're changing it um, to basar of the shor, not the actual shor. Right? So I basar chamar beshar, or a chamar with a shor kibbutz zacha zeh. Since this one is not going to be a chalipin, therefore, you're chayiv, we're chayiv with chalipin. Right? So that's the way you'd understand the Mishnah. So if you understand the Mishnah, it's talking about a coin, then we're talking about basar shar, basar chamar, not actual shar no chamar. So when I ask, that's good according to Rav Sheshes. Domar peris avdi chalipin, that you could do chalipin with peris, meaning you could use a fruit as chalipin. Elor of Nachman, Domar peris loy avdi chalipin, Going to Ram Nachman, who says that Paris you can't do Khalifin, Michael and Maymar, what are you gonna say? Right? He holds you can't do Paris. So how does Ram Nachman gonna understand the Mishnah? So when I answer Zahi Kamar, Yesh Damim Shain Khalipin, there is such a thing as money that does have Khalifin. Kaysad, how can you have Khalifin with money? Hich lift the May Sharba Para. Let's say a guy swapped out the money that he was owed. For, meaning he sold a shar. Instead of taking the money, he took a para. Or the money of a chamar for the shar. Now, the way Rashi explains it is basically he sold a guy a shar. The guy says, I'm going to pay you later. Then I guess it was dragging out. And the guy says, you know what? Forget about the money. You have yourself a para. Give me the para in exchange for the money. And that's and that'll be enough. So that's a type of chalipin instead of money. So that's what the case the mission is talking about that it works. Okay, my timer. Huh? Now we go. Now why is it? Why is it that money? Um, why is it different from from other other money? Meaning, why can't you use money for metaltalin? Right. So we had already before. When he says, "I want to be mach of what you owe me," basically. You know this this diamond that you owe me. Does he have to do a Kenyan at that or point? Or can he just say, "I'm giving you shar number right. three? Well, like, something? how is he making a chal? I uh, hear. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that, does he have to. I'm not sure. I didn't think about it. Does he have to make a Kenyan on it? I would think yes, but but then the whole point is that then there's no chiddush, right? That's what you're saying. All right. I mean, they bring down Taisha right. that says that you do it with the Hanah, that you're being Michael alone. It's, you know, right, but you can't actually, make, it's Milba like Sunday or not. You can't say the actual Halva is doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. And it's a style of Rivis. I don't know. I don't know how they get around it. Yeah. 
Okay, very good. But anyway, so Gemara says, my time. So I look at Yochan and Dahmar, Var Tyra Moy is kindness. Mina Tyra money is kindness. You give somebody money and you're kind of the item. But why did the Chachamim say that you, if it, if it moves, then it needs to do Meshticha? Why? Because maybe the seller is going to tell him, your, your wheat got burnt in the Aliyah. Right? We, we, we had this before, at least in the Rashi, we had it before. Meaning if I'm going to be able to buy wheat from a guy and I call him up and say, hey, I'm selling you some money and now I want you wheat. The guy says, you sell me the money, the wheat's yours. Fine. Now this guy, the seller, is going to say, well, I got this guy's wheat in my, in my property. I don't need it here. It belongs to him. And then there's a fire. He's not going to try and put it out because he doesn't care. It doesn't belong to him. Right? So he's not going to take care of it properly. So therefore, the Chum said, a Kenyan is not... Is not uh, uh, what do you call it, completed until the buyer also has to pull it. Like this, the seller is going to take care of the items that are in his property because otherwise the sale is not going to work. So that's the Takona So here... Uh, how do you, if, you're in, if, you're in, if you're in... You go ahead. If you're in New York, how do you buy the wheat for, for Pesach? You're in Arizona, you buy 10, 10 tons of wheat and you're in New York and they're in Arizona. So you didn't buy the wheat? Yeah, you did. You okay. have to. Or you use I tell you where this it? comes up. I tell you where this comes up. You know, you have the, you know, now all the stores that sell utensils and dishes have a mikvah on premises, right? So right. they title it for you. So when they break right? it, so whose is it? So, right. right. So now what do you say? Okay, I called them up. I called them up. I gave them a credit card. That's very nice. Where was the Kenyan mate? Mm hmm. And now they're tiveling. When they're tiveling, it doesn't belong to you and it doesn't belong to them. Uh -huh. Is that not Situmta? Yeah, there's ways around it. That the, uh, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're kind of on behalf of you. Blah, blah, blah. That way, but it's not a push at the thing. Right? The best way to do it would be for somebody in the store to be mocking it to you, are you there, are you meaning let one guy, one employee from the store give it over to another guy and say, pick this up on behalf of of this guy that just called up on the phone and gave us a credit card. Right? Mm -hmm. That would be that, that would be the best way. But whatever, that's but that's what the Gemara is concerned with. Right? So anyway, so Milsa the Shriya So a case that's common like this, so then then the Chachama made a takana, you have to make sure you do you do a Kenyan. Milsa the Loishriach, but if it's not common like this case, when the guy Offers the guy buys a shor, and then the guy doesn't have the money. Says, you know what? Give me a para instead. So they like goes the on it. Right. So therefore, that's why it works. This type of kinyan will work, even though normally we want you to do a mashiach. According to this akiva, it seems cautious that the guy does not do any sort of kinyan, and we're still saying it goes back to the deraisa, which is that Myers is kind of. Fine. Then going to even if even if you say that, it's still very schwer. That you could be kinder with Alwa. You still have to answer that question. Because even if, if even if you hold Mice's kindness, Alva is different. You can't make Correct. a king Correct. with Alva. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's, it's you were using some sort of combination of Khalipin here. I think. No, in Matbe and Nikdam Khalipin at this point, the Gemara held. You can't say it's not Khalipin. I mean, I don't know what you have to come up with some other idea that, that to make a well, that's what he's saying. Yesh domim shehein kichalipin. You're going to use mice However, for chalipin? No, it's ke. It's not, it's not, it's ke. It's not so what is like it? it. It's not it. I don't know. <laughs> I uh, no, no, I'm idea. just saying, like, what does that mean? How's the chal? I don't I'm know. Saying... I don't know. It's, it's uh, yeah. Okay, weiter. So what about Rish Lakish? This is all according to Rabbi Yochanan. But according to Rish Lakish, who holds that Meshichas Minatayra, meaning again, Rabbi Yochanan holds Meshichas at the Rabbanon. Because of this chashash that the guy selling it is not going to take good care of it. Fine. But what about Rish Lakish, who holds that Meshichas Mefurish in the Taira? Right? Then how are we understanding the Mishnah? So how do you say that Rav Sheshes that Paris works with Khalipin. 
the Taras of Sheshes, because they were talking about Rav Sheshes. Right? The Chalipin works with Paris, and the male of the meat of the animals, well, you can do a swap. At least of a Korim Nachman, Dom Paris, we have the Chalipin, but if Rish Lakish, hold the Korim Nachman, that Paris don't do Chalipin, Umatpea like Kani, right? And Umatpea, you can't do it either. Right? So, my Mukila, then what is our Mishnah talking about? Right? So again, in a word, I guess let's call it a worst case scenario. If Rish Lakish goes to Rav Nachman, right, because he's told that there's no Chalipin with Paris, right, and then um, and then you can't go with the Kenyan Kesef, right. So therefore, so how's he understanding the entire Mishnah? What are you swapping out here? The one that says Al Kochah Kerav Sheishas must be, goes like Rav Sheshet, and therefore that you could do a Kinyin Chalipin with Paris. Right? So meaning when the Mishnah says, Kol Anisham Dom and Ba'achar, when you evaluate money with something else, right, it's talking about any any movable thing, any movable item. Okay, it's a little difficult to understand. Basically, there's three Pshatim in the Mishnah. Here's the Mishnah is talking about doing Chalipin straight money, which the Gemara really doesn't doesn't like that, Teretz. All we're talking about doing it with basar, of, it really means the meat of the animals, and that's what's swapping out, and and, and then we, if you do that, you hold that Paris, you could do a Kinyin Chalibin with, and then you have the last way of understanding it, where it's, where it's sort of like this loan that turns into a Kinyin Chalibin or of money. Yeah, that's, that's basically what it is. I, how that works, I'm not exactly sure. Fine. Then the Gemara says, Rishus HaGavaya Bekesem. The Rishus Kavaya, meaning the Beis HaMikdash, is everything works with money. All Kenyanim work with money. U Rishus HaHedjit, the Chazaka. And Rishus HaHedjit is a Chazaka, meaning if you want to buy a field from your friend, you can go put up a fence, dig a hole, then you coin it. That does not work from Hektish. If you're going to buy land from Hektish, just making Chazaka, and it doesn't work. You have to, you have to give the money. Right? And then the Gemara says, Ami Rasa Le Gavaya, Kamisi Rasa Le Hedjit. For when any saying to Gavaya is like handing something over to a hedget. Right? Normally, we say a, a Kenyan works. If I'm selling something to my friend, so I give him the item that he's buying, and then he's kind of. Right? So by hectish, you don't have to actually give it over. As long as you say it to hectish, meaning if I say I'm selling my phone to the base of Mikdash, then it automatically gets sold to the base of Mikdash. The same way if I give my phone, I hand it over to somebody and he says, I'm buying this, then that is already also a Kenyan. So it's there, they're the equivalent, even though one is verbal and one is physical. Okay, so talk to you about it. What do you mean? What do you mean that the Roshos of is with Kesef? So Gizbar, so you have a Gizbar, he's the treasurer, the guy in charge of the money in the base of Mikdash. Shinas and Mois that he gives money to an act for for a behema. I mean, he's buying he's buying a behema for the base of Mikdash. A few behema besaifa oilam. Even if the animals on the other side of the world, in the end of the world, kana, the base of Mikdash is kainet, right? Um, Ubehedjit, meaning he goes, meaning he's this gizbar is nowhere near the base of Mikdash. He gives money and says, "I'm buying this on behalf of the base of Mikdash." Then he is it's kainet, even if this animal. Is on the other side of the world, or the person's on the other, whatever it is, it's the, there's no handling of the item, just of the money. So that, that's kind of a hedget, like konachi yimshach. But like we've been saying, a hedget is not kind of until there's mashicha. Right? Even if the guy gives him money, there's no kinyan until there's mashicha. So Gemara says, Ketzad, how does that work? Oh, so I'm sorry, Ketzad Amirasa Lukavaya. How does Amirasa Lukavaya, Kimisirasa Lukavaya, saying something to the Beit HaMikdash is like handing something to a hedget. I'm a Shorzeh Oila. If a guy says, this Shor is becoming an Oila. I use that Hektish. I'm making my whole house Hektish. I feel a for Oila. Even if the animal or the house are at the end of the world, Kana, the Beit HaMikdash is kind of it. But the hedget, like Kana, meaning a guy says, again, a guy says, my house, I'm making Hektish. It becomes automatic Hektish. If he says, my house, I'm selling it to this guy. That's meaningless until there has to be some sort of Kenyan. But the head yet, like Kana, on Tamar Aleph now, Achi Yimshach, the Yachzik, until he does the Mashicha or 
here of the vav means or, or he does a chazaka, meaning there has to be a kinyan done. Mashchu b'mana. Let's say um, he pulls the money, right? Meaning he does a kinyan the money. Velay his pick lift daisai, and he couldn't do a pigeon. At sha'amad b'masayim until the price goes up to two hundred. No, it's a masayim. He has to give two hundred again. What happened is, is that the guy. Uh, you know what happens? Got people donate things to Hectish. Now, uh, Hectish has no use for them. Let's say a phone. Right? The guy makes his phone into Hectish. So Hec- what's Hectish doing with this? So he's got a whole warehouse full of full of things that they're going to sell out. So basically what you do is they sell it to people. When the people give the money, then the money becomes Hectish. And, uh, and whatever item they're buying goes into Hulin. So here the guy picks it up. But he wasn't able to give the money. He didn't give the money yet. Meaning they, you know, they put out a table in the base of Mikdash of all these items. Right? The guy picks it up and says, I, I want this. Before before he even gets to give the money to the Gizbar, the price goes up by 100 bucks. And now how much how much does this guy have to give? Does he have to give 100? Or does he have to give 200? So the Gemara says he has to give 200. Right? My timer. Because it says, You have to give money and then it becomes his. So by hectish, like we said, till you give money, it doesn't become yours. So the price went up, that's your problem. So what happens, Mashchub and Masayim, if he picked it up and it was worth 200, but he wasn't able to pay for it. The price went down to 100. Nice and Masayim, he has to give 200. So he's losing on both ends from Hektish. My timer, what's the reason? The Koyach of a Hedge shouldn't be any more Chama than Hektish. Meaning, how could it be that let's say it was uh, me buying a phone from a guy. I pick up the phone and I buy it, and and uh, I pick it up and I say I'm buying it, and it's worth two hundred, and then the price shoots down before I even get to take my money out of my wallet to a hundred. So how much am I paying him? I have to pay him two hundred because that was what was agreed on. So the Gemara is saying, how could it be that hectish is going to be treated worse than than uh, than a human? So it can't be. So therefore. He has to pay 200. So meaning the human is always on the losing end. Right? Isn't that Masayim. only zero? That's a midoraisa. Your, your Kenyan is how is only how when you give money. Meaning even even mitzad the hedya, your Kenyan, it, it's it's only xero that causes it that I'm not kind of until I'm well, okay. So I don't know if you're asking Tyson's Kasha. Tyson says, what's the problem? What's the chiddush here? Just say Amirasi Lugalik means Amirasi Lahedit. All right. No, I'm asking it differently. I'm saying for Kerry, you shouldn't. It shouldn't work because, like, it's Xera that it works. Yeah, it's not that's a more. You're, you're. I, I hear. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. No. So he's just saying uh-huh. that the Amirasi okay. will work right away. Right. I hear. I don't know. Does it I work? Is it, is I don't it know. But anyway, Amirasi. Tysus is mashma that it would be. Uh huh. Anyways, whatever it is, the point is that you're always on the losing end when you're going with Hektish. Padam and Masayim. Let's say he was paid for 200. Right? The loy hispik lemoshcha, meaning here's the, the, the opposite case. Till now, somewhere where he picked up the item, he didn't yet give the money. Here, now we're talking about he gave the money, but he didn't yet pick it up. So Padam Masayim, he told him, the guy told him, you know, the phone that you're buying, $200. He says, he, so he takes out the $200 and gives it to him. Then, before he was able to pick it up, now the price went down by 100. He still has to give 200. My timer. Right? Since when he gave the money, it was worth 200. So that's it. That's what it is. But let's say it was worth 100 and he paid the cash, but he didn't pick it up yet. And he it went up to 200. So here, finally, the hedget wins. Right? Again, he gave money when it was worth 100. And then the price went up to 200. The Gizmo tells him, hey, the price went up. The guy says, I don't care. I gave you the cash already. In that case, he only has to pay 100. Am I? So, Why don't you say a hedget is not any more chomer than hektish? Right? Because the, since there was no Mashiach done by, by two humans, there was no Mashiach done, he could have just said, hey, you never did a Mashiach. So there was no Kenyan. So 
So why can't why can't Hector say the same thing? Right before we said we can't have Hector have any more makulas than uh, than humans. So how come here we have that? The Gemara says, "Atu hedjit lab demisha parakoi." Hedjit is going to be is going to have a misha para. Right, misha para means. Whoever well, Hashem that took revenge from the Dora Mabel is going to take revenge. Meaning, yes, even though theoretically, if somebody backs out before a Kenyan backs out of a deal before a Kenyan was done, he's Potter, but it's called Mishapara, meaning Hashem is going to take revenge on you. So here, even though, yes, theoretically, when a guy pays for something and he didn't yet do a, a Kenyan on it, theoretically, the seller could back out, but he's going to be on the hook, Mina Shamayim. So therefore, he's not really able to get away with it. So that's why for Hectish we could say the same thing, that Hectish is not any any more makel, because the human is going to get punished for it. So so too, Hectish, Hectish also is going to lose out. All right? Okay, that's, uh, we'll stop over here. Tomorrow's daf is, is one of those daf and we could spend a week on, on Kibbut Avayim, Mitzvah Seishas Mangroma, the next bunch of blood are very interesting. Very interesting. Not nearly as technical as this. Okay. Maybe we should start uh, early.